Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I want to talk about few things about software engineering that I honestly think not many people talk about. Of course, this channel is here to encourage you and motivate you to become and excel as a software engineer. But like with anything else in life, there are downsides to being a software engineer as well. And in this video, I want to make sure that you are at least aware of those things. But before we get started, if you like my content and haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell icon so that you don't miss videos that I make to help you excel as a software engineer. This channel is currently at 90,000 subs and I will be doing a massive giveaway for my subscribers when we hit 100,000. So if you haven't already, please make sure you hit subscribe. With that said, let's get started. The first thing that sucks about being a software engineer is the competition. Top tech compensation, benefits, perks, and knowledge growth opportunities can be life-changing. And for that reason, most software engineers aspire to work for the biggest tech companies. But the harsh reality is that competition for big tech is quite fierce. A CNBC article from 2019 outlined that Google receives around 3 million applications each year and hires only about 0.2%, which basically means 499 out of 500 applicants don't make it through the interviews. This makes Google 26 times more selective than Harvard because according to the Harvard Crimson, the acceptance rate for Harvard in 2019 was 5.3%. Not only that, but 3 million is a massive number of applications to go through. There's simply just not enough time to look at every application, let alone interview them. These are just Google's numbers, but I've read a bunch of other publications for companies like Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, and Apple, and they all have very similar statistics when it comes to application volume to acceptance ratios. And because all these companies always seem to have many positions open, and with so many software engineers graduating each year or actively looking for jobs, it would be easy to assume that getting in would be pretty simple. But if you peek at the hiring statistics, the story is quite the opposite, which takes me to my second point, how difficult it is to switch jobs in software engineering. Switching jobs in the software engineering world can be a nightmare. There's no real standard to defining what makes a great software engineer. So companies or at least categories of companies have started using their own evaluation processes. Big tech loves their data structures and algorithms because they believe that anyone with strong fundamentals can learn any new stat. And they also have the budget to let you figure things out for many months. And this also makes sense for large tech companies because they have so many different projects that use so many different programming languages and frameworks that they do need their hires to be able to adapt to any of those very quickly. The downside of that is that you may have worked on some really awesome projects and you may have many years of experience, but you'd still have to sit down and prepare for the tricky data structures and algorithms interview questions. But then if you want to work for mid-size or smaller startups, they don't really care much about data structures and algorithms. Instead, they need you to be well-versed in the exact stack they use because they don't have the time or the budget to train you and you need to be up and running right away. So as a software engineer, if you're looking to switch jobs and want to make sure that you cover all types of companies, you not only need to be an expert in a specific tech stack, but also very good at problem solving with data structures and algorithms. And let's not forget the ability to design large distributed systems in about 45 minutes, especially for big tech. So as you can see, trying new things or branching out to different technologies can be quite difficult because of how massive the hiring expectations are. If you're not already working on interview type algorithms daily, or if you don't already work on multiple technology stacks, or if you don't have experience designing large scale distributed systems, your job search options can actually be quite limited right off the bat, regardless of how much experience you have. The third thing that sucks about being a software engineer is the politics you must deal with. Popular culture stereotypes software engineers as these carefree people that don't style their hair or don't care about fashion or anything like that. They don't care about bureaucracies or politics because they are just massive geeks who just care about building stuff, right? Well, I can't really comment on fashion and all, but I can tell you that software engineers or software engineering in general is not free from politics. I'm sure every push or block or conflict starts with the best interest of the product in mind, but the problem is that the best interest can mean 
very different things depending on who's looking at it. So you're not just there worrying about building the most well-engineered or optimized product. You also must deal with things like compliance, governance, legal ads, finance, marketing, and so much more. And sometimes when all stakeholders have had their requests met, the product can sway quite a lot from its original design. This is usually not an issue with very well-run and functional teams with strong engineering cultures. But if that's not the case, having to jump through multiple hoops and processes can be quite frustrating as a software engineer. That's why traits like communication and leadership are as important as technical aptitude. This is where having a strong support system can make a huge difference. But that's also not always guaranteed, which takes me to my fourth point, the lack of people management training for engineering leadership. Every company, regardless of whether it is tech or not, needs a good layer of management. Since software engineering is highly technical field, in most cases, you'll find managers who are strongly technical. However, being great technical lead isn't the same thing as being a great people manager, both of which are equally important. There's obviously a natural bias in the tech world for selecting the best technical leaders, but I find that there isn't a great amount of push on training for people management. In an ideal world, every team would have a technical lead and an engineering manager, but that's very rarely the case. So you usually end up with one or the other. You have a great technical manager who's very involved with the nitty gritty of code, is highly respected as a technical leader, but does not do much in terms of people management. Or you have a very skilled people manager who's not very strong technically. And this isn't due to anyone's fault. It's just hard to balance technical leadership and people management, and not everyone can do it successfully. Can you excel working with either type of these managers? Absolutely, but a lot of it depends on you and the kind of person you are. If you work for a highly technical manager, but need a lot of guidance on non-technical areas like confidence, communication, mindset, teamwork, career growth, mental health, then you may find yourself yearning for more. At the same time, if you work for a very talented people manager, you may end up feeling that you don't get enough in terms of mentoring uh, for your career or your technical skill set. A study done by DDI on hiring and attrition in 2020 concluded that 57% of employees leave their company because of their managers. There have also been multiple publications on Harvard Business Review suggesting the same. And finally, my last point is the need to constantly keep up with new technologies, which may eventually lead to burnout. See, the tech landscape changes quite rapidly and quite drastically. If you want to remain competitive in the software engineering world, you not only have to excel at your job duties, but also keep up with the changing landscape to remain marketable in the industry. This means keeping up to date with new processes, practices, technologies, and the general movements in tech. And you'd have to do all of this on your own time out of your own interest. This pressure can be exhausting, especially if you have a demanding day job and a family to sustain. And add to this the difficulty of technical interviews I mentioned earlier in the video, and you can easily feel trapped, stuck, or unhappy in your current position. Demanding projects, the need need to constantly update your skill set and a difficult interview process for switching companies can easily result in burnout. And in fact, a bunch of statistics show a high burnout rate in tech. According to an anonymous workplace review conducted in 2019 of 10,000 tech workers at 30 of the biggest tech companies, 19% of tech workers said that work overload contributed to their burnout, while 15% of tech workers listed poor control and career growth as reason for burnout. Also, out of the 30 companies, 25 of them had an employee burnout rate of over 50%. Only five companies had a burnout rate of less than 50%. Specifically, around 60% of employees at Lyft reported feeling burnt out, 60% of employees at Amazon reported feeling burnt out, 58% at Airbnb, and 57% at Apple. While some of these factors I mentioned in the video, like finding a great manager can be a matter of luck. You can, however, be smart about how you keep up with the changing technological landscape so that you can build up the confidence and remain marketable in the tech industry. Well, these were five things that I think suck about being a software engineer. 
Did I miss anything? If so, let me know in the comments below. But like I mentioned earlier in this video, my goal is not to scare you away from a career in software engineering. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The reason I'm even making this video is to encourage you to be aware of these things so that you can invest on improving your technical as well as non-technical skills like communication, leadership, or you can at least try to find a good mentor and a manager, um, understand how you can remain relevant in the industry and other things like that. Um, so I hope this was somewhat useful. If it was, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and remember to hit the notification bell as well. Also, for monthly Q&As, follow me on Instagram at engineeringwithilsa. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.